Mute, Lisa. Okay. The other panelists, you guys can mute yourselves if you want, or um, otherwise you're live right now. All right, here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar for Mossy Bioservices. We're just going to start here in a minute. We're excited to have you guys with us today. I hope everybody can hear me. If you've done um, something like this before, it's a good idea to close any other programs you have open, mute your phone for the best connection, best audio for this. Um, to start, we're just going to do um, some introductions. I'm going to start with, um, we have Jeb Evans, and I'll let him introduce himself real quick. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Jeb Evans. I'm the COO at Mossy Bioservices. So I'm responsible for our various P&Ls and uh, making sure that we provide good customer support and service. Thanks, Jeb. And then we have Michael Alberti. Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, as Jeb said, uh, I'm Mike Alberti. I'm the director of metrology um, and its operations, uh, both in Massachusetts and in New Jersey. Um, and we're really uh, looking forward to your uh, questions. And next I have Lauren Pappas. Everybody, uh, I'm Lauren Pappas. I'm the manager of validation here in the mass office. And Gary Best. Hello, uh, thanks for joining us. I'm the sales manager for equipment, where we do rentals and sales. And we have distributorships with Anthenol K, with Fluke, and with Mesa Labs Data Trace. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. And next is John Orange. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Orange, director of the Biorepository. Looking forward to answering your questions. Glad to have you. And John Masiello. John, I can't hear you. No volume, John. No, sorry. Hi, I'm the executive vice president, uh, co-founder of Masi. And uh, we, we're uh, glad to have everybody here so that we can kind of share best practices and please uh, interact with us because uh, this is a this is an unusual uh, situation that we're all in, and if we can share things that uh, will help us all, all the better. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. And um, I just want to let you guys know, the attendees know, that you can start sending in questions to us anytime at the end of um, this discussion. We're going to have a question and answer session and um, a chance for everyone to answer those questions. But if you want to type the questions in now, we'll all... Um, be able to prepare for that and answer them at the end. So anytime you want to send a question in is great. Um, I'm going to start with Mike Alberti and I'm going to have each panelist kind of give an overview of what they're doing in the middle of this pandemic, how their departments have changed or adjusted procedures and operations um, in the middle of this. So uh, Mike, I will give you the floor. Thanks. So just a reminder for the people who might have joined uh, late, uh, I am the director of metrology, so I will be uh, talking about the operations as far as calibrations are concerned. Um, some of the things that we've changed immediately, uh, we, we went with two shifts. Uh, we do not have any overlap, so we have um, employees in the morning and on the second shift. Uh, we've instituted uh, cleaning equipment as it comes in. Uh, that's wiped down, disinfected uh, before it's brought into the lab. Uh, also, the workstations, all the technicians are segregated with a minimum of 15 to uh, 10 to 15 feet from one another. Um, this is uh, to help with the social distancing. Um, we have disinfected areas uh, throughout the lab where people are wiping down their areas before and after uh, working, and we are not sharing communal um, laptops or computers. Um, we have uh, the field services have been segregated from the internal uh, employees, so we have another level of separation. Um, our equipment that they use is also separated from the equipment in the lab. Um, we all are required to wear gloves and masks at all times, obviously ramping up the hygiene and 
We have um, sanitizer walking in the lab uh, for people to um, kind of disinfect their hands. And also, you know, we have signage everywhere that explains to everybody the importance of social distancing. Um, that's just some of the um, things that we've done. We've also added um, that the equipment is cleaned and disinfected before it leaves the warehouse. And I believe that we're putting a, a nice form in there that kind of outlines that the equipment was in fact cleaned and there's initial and data on there. So you know that it was performed by an actual human. It's not just somebody putting a piece of paper in a box. That is actually happening. Um, I'm sure there's several other things that I might have missed and you know you can I guess save those for your questions but I hope that answers it. Awesome thank you Mike. Um, next we're going to hear from John Orange a little bit about the bio and how bio is dealing with COVID-19. Thanks Amy. Yeah so um, anybody who joined late I'm the director of the bio repository my name is John Orange um, some of you I might know met already, some maybe I haven't yet. Uh, but one of the things that we've done in the bio was implement a staggered shift approach. Uh, what we want to do is uh, lessen the amount of people on site at once um, to support social distancing. So we sent home all non-essential employees. They're essentially working uh, remotely from home. Um, and for the individuals who have to be here to carry out orders, um, shipping, receiving, um, they're working starting as early as four, four in the morning uh, and working as late as, uh, and some shifts are working as late as eight or nine o'clock in the evening. This is quite different from our normal model where we're typically operating from 8 a.m. to 4.30. Uh, so this, in addition to distancing, and uh, spreading out our workforce uh, has allowed us to take on uh, more flexible opportunities. Uh, as you can imagine, during these times, there's a lot of uh, last minute requests or emergency orders due to borders closing or what have you. Um, so, you know, it, it's given us a lot of flexibility. But to Mike's point earlier, we're wearing gloves and masks. That's, that's a requirement. I'm here in my office right now, so door closed and, and here on the webinar, but if you were to walk out in our facility, everybody has on gloves, everybody has on masks. <clears throat> and uh, in addition to that, we've also implemented a, a strict courier policy uh, because we do have massy deliveries that go to different sites local to the area. And uh, we, we've implemented a procedure that allows us to keep our drivers safe uh, protecting us, protecting you, everybody in the loop. We're just trying to uh, keep it as aseptic and as uh, socially distant as possible. So those are those are some of the things. And again, uh, we put a we we put a bunch of different measures in place, but at a high level, those are some of the initial things that we did right out of the gate uh, just to um, prepare. Thanks. Great, thanks, John. Um, Lauren, I'm gonna. Go to you next if you can give us a little update on validation processes. Yeah, um, and reminder I'm Lauren Kappas, the manager here of the Mass Office, so I will be speaking for all our validation offices um, across the country. Uh, for the most part, these policies apply to all our offices. Uh, obviously, there are some small details that are specific to the offices. Uh, here in Mass, we have a two-shift uh, policy while in the office, uh, same as metrology, uh, from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, and then same in the office and at all customer sites, we're wearing masks and gloves at all times. Uh, always practicing social distancing, good hygiene practices. Uh, we've set up a pass through and transfer area in the office so that we can pass equipment in and out of the office without having uh, without having to have our technicians actually enter the office uh, which is which is good to keep our uh, business going at all hours of the day uh, they do not have to they're not segregated just to their shift so they can access the office and all equipment is cleaned as they come in and out of the office uh, and then for reports, uh, 
most of our team is working at home. Uh, our field team is working at home. Uh, they can create all the reports virtually, submit it to quality virtually. Um, pretty much everything gets approved virtually. Uh, so we don't need to have a person-to-person -person interaction. I think I covered most of the points. Uh, if I didn't, feel free to send in questions. Great, thank you, Lauren. Um, Gary Best, if you could speak a little bit Hello. to equipment rental sure. and sales. I think you can see all the participants can see that Massey has a uniform approach to uh, make sure that everything is done properly and appropriately. Uh, in my case, part of the sales team, we're all working from home. In our customer care people, I work very closely with Sarah James. We're all working from home. And the result is our customer service has continued to be very, very good. We are totally open for business. The operations part of the warehouse actually has more hours coverage by splitting shifts than we have before. We're able to uh, respond very quickly to requests. We have done overnight shipments as always, and we have an inventory of equipment that's available for rental and our sale, uh, validators, uh, wireless systems, the data trace. We also have fluke baths and other baths available. And we have maintained our good customer service through this. And as Mike pointed out earlier, everything that goes out of our plant is thoroughly clean, disinfected, uh, labeled as such. And I'm sure when you receive it on the other end, you're doing your appropriate measures as well. So we're open for business. We're doing it safely. We're doing it according to Massey's policies. And thank you for your business. Hey, thanks, Gary. George Biro has joined us. He is um, working in the monitoring department. So, George, if you want to give a quick introduction of yourself and then an update. Thank you, Amy. I'm George Biro, Massey's monitoring system product manager. Uh, a little intro to what we do for monitoring at Massey is we provide a Internet of Things level um, monitoring service, something that is called Sense Anywhere. It is truly effortless to set up. You can see it from any smart device. And uh, we are certainly open for business as more and more people than ever are realizing that they want to be able to see their their products and how safely they're stored from the comfort of their home or on any smart device. Much like the other uh, operations at Massey that requires people to go into the office, we're also doing split shifts in the monitoring unit. And um, our technicians are providing tech support from home and finishing monitoring validation reports from home and only go into the office on that split shift when there is orders to be fulfilled or project prep. Great, thank you. Um, if anyone has any questions for our panelists, you can type them in the question, um, the question box on the right side of your screen and we can get back to you on those questions. If you have a specific question for a specific person, you can note that as well. I'm just gonna give it a few minutes. Um, I don't know if John, if you want to speak as well to what overall MASI policies are in, in, this, in these days um, mm -hmm. and give people a chance to ask some questions. Sure, thank you, Amy. Um, one, one of the critical components of the responsibilities of uh, our roles is to keep everybody safe. And by keeping everybody safe is a uh, is, is something we have always been involved in doing. But in these times, it requires a lot of different methods. And by taking the different team members, by hearing from what are some of our customers and our vendors have been offering, we've basically taken the best of the best, and we're still open to listen to other ideas to improve the uh, the process. Uh, one of the uh, critical components of this very quick pandemic reaction uh, process was our IT people had to get infrastructure in place because over 50% of our team members, 50% uh, were sent home, like within, I think within two days of when we made a decision, they have to work at home. And our team had very little time to implement what they've been planning on and working on for probably a year in advance, had to implement it and talk about they were on the front lines of, of the, of the of, of everything, everything that's happening. And they uh, are gonna say give a lot of kudos in order to be successful for this. And anybody that's working from home or what have you 
has to support has to be supported by the IT people in order to make this successful. Um, the, uh, the other another component I want to touch base is that uh, the segregation within our facility. If somebody goes into one part of the building, there's a cool down period before they can go into another building. Therefore, if there's say a contamination or there's an issue or something like that, that they're not social butterflies flying all around throughout the building and possibly contaminating. That's something really important. And the same thing applies when we're going to different customer sites. When they go into a customer site, they come back, there's a cool down period before they can go to another customer site. Very important because you know that's uh, that, that that's that's where we're seeing. Um, and then uh, and then another extension is that some of our folks uh, where our salespeople are are kind of cooped up and frustrated by being in house all the time, they've actually extended themselves out and they're actually doing some pickup and deliveries on personal issues that somebody will be asking. And I think that's uh, that's an opportunity. They don't get to see them face to face, but they do pick up, deliver, help out in that manner, which is really helpful for sensitive equipment or timely equipment. And um, it's, 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 it's if it's your own. So. But, um, and the other is the last and foremost is the cleaning staff that we have uh, has changed their gears from making it aesthetically cleaning to more to a more uh, process of that their touch everything that's touched they're focused on just beginning to the end so continuously going through that in order to touch the surfaces the knobs the handles keeping doors open what have you just it is a very different method but So Amy, you great, have some thank you, thank you, John, thank you, everybody. Um, if anyone has a question or if you have something you'd like to share, um, feel free to type it in that question box. Like I said, I have one question. Um, just a note from Veronica that said she wants to thank Mossy for her for our support in getting stability pull samples to Lanthia. So thank you for that. Um, but if anyone has anything specific they want to talk about or um, ask, now is the time. Um, we have we have Jeb also on on the line. He's our sorry, my microphone is breaking up a bit. Um, and Jeb, if I don't know if you would like to say anything to speak to operations. Um, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, so I guess what I, you know, as I listened to everybody, they did an, a, a really nice job of describing some of the efforts that we've taken to uh, mitigate the impact that this could have on on Mossy as well as our customers. Um, just stepping back a little bit, though, but from the details, what I would say is, from the very beginning, even before this happened, really, we recognize our place in the uh, in the supply chain to all of our customers. We provide essential services, and if we if we're unable to provide those services, the impact to our customers could be nearly catastrophic. It's it's uh, extremely important that we uh, protect ourselves so that we can continue to support all of our customers. So um, with that in mind, when this began to develop, uh, we immediately implemented a number of um, uh, procedures that you've already heard about, the social distancing, the hygiene, increased disinfection, you know, the janitorial portion of it. Um, and then we stepped back a little bit and started to think about um, the nature of our business, or really it's businesses, because as you may have heard, we have you know multiple uh, areas that we're that we're active in. So we have um, we have office work, we have on-premise work, uh, things like our metrology lab, um, some of the validation efforts, some of the some of the monitoring has to be on site. Uh, Biorepository is absolutely on site, on premises, uh, and then field services. So we're going to our customer sites and performing services for them as well. Um, and every one of those presents us with different challenges. So in some instances, um, for example, in biorepository, we have a buddy system if you're going into a, an ultra freezer. And um, because of that, we have to treat that a little bit differently. Social distancing isn't possible. Um, but what we, what we did determine was that we could do two things. Um, one, we could, we could segregate individuals and teams those smaller teams spatially. And then we, we talked about implementing multiple shifts or two shifts. And really that was the chronological distancing that we put in place. Um, what maybe wasn't explained though, is that the reason for the two shifts is we have a span of time in between those shifts, a half hour, and we disinfect surfaces uh, at the end of each shift. 
Um, so that means that the people on the first shift don't interact with the people on the second shift. Uh, it's tough socially, but what it means is if we're unsuccessful in our efforts to prevent COVID from making its way to Mossy, um, what we can do is hopefully through these efforts minimize the impact on our operations. So for example, if the first shift, somebody on the first shift happened to uh, uh, introduce COVID, uh, we could use the people on the second shift could continue to uh, provide services. In fact, they might be moved to uh, the first shift. Uh, so we might split them into a first and second shift. So even if we if we had an, an issue, um, the disruption to our customers could be minimized. So that was the intent of, uh, uh, of those steps that we've taken. Um, and, and I think some people may, may be aware of this. We sent out an announcement to our customers. In fact, we did have uh, an employee who tested positive, and um, that was about three weeks ago now. And fortunately, I guess these efforts are working because we have had no other employees uh, who have tested positive or exhibited symptoms in the interim. So um, apparently the social distancing and the compartmentalization efforts that we put in place um, have have been effective. So we're, we're very pleased about that. And obviously we're continuing to uh, uh, look for ways to uh, improve our, our uh, ability to contain anything that might happen. Thank you, Jeb. Um, I have a question that came in about validation. I sent to you, Lauren. Could you address the question? The question was, what are the current lead times for scheduling and executing validation projects? I think you're on mute. Can you hold on one second? Sorry, currently we're looking at about a uh, two to three week lead time for scheduling projects. Uh, it's actually pretty uh, standard at this point. Great, thanks. Um, there's another question I'm going to um, give to John Orange about bio storage. The question is, I'm worried that I may have to make an emergency storage shipment. Does Mossy have the capacity to handle such requests? Thanks, Amy. Yeah, that's that's a great question. And this is it's really, uh, it's almost no different than normal because uh, these emergencies, they come up normally and, and outside of the pandemic that we're experiencing right now. Uh, we've had requests come in before for after hour shipments and we accommodate. Uh, there's a need, there's a, somebody needs an API, a drug substance, you know, medicine, they need to ship it. Uh, we store it. So, so we are a vital part of that chain, that life-saving uh, chain, as, as Lori would put it. And, um, you know, we know how, we know how important that is. It just so happens that because we've implemented this staggered shift coverage that's opened up the window of our operations, it's just all, all, all that it's to announce, making it easier to accommodate those requests uh, rather than on a you know Friday afternoon, hey, we have something coming in at six or seven o'clock. Uh, we now know that we already have coverage and then it's just a matter of, do we need extra resources? Uh, do we have all the paperwork, all the documentation in place? So we, we have no problem accommodating those type of requests. Uh, now, especially more than ever, we, we know that there are extenuating circumstances. So um, absolutely, yeah. Now on, on the capacity side, uh, it all it also depends that there's resources and then there's available uh, freezer capacity. And usually we you know we haven't had to turn it you know turn anything away from a volume perspective, but you know we, that that's another consideration. Do we have the available? And generally you know there's no there's no issues with accommodating that. So. Um, no, we're all uh, firing at all cylinders on our end. Um, yeah, thank you. If I could add to that, it's the communication is critically important because if somebody is thinking about something that's going to happen pretty quickly, it's critically important to talk with the team members, making sure we have all the information required, the profile, what are the requirements that it's John saying, <clears throat> to be able to have that information. And I knew it's a, it's a moving target. It might have shifted a little bit, might shift the day, might pull in a day, whatever happens. And um, but the most communication we have with the bio ops team, along with the customer, is critically important. 
that we have numbers to, to talk to make sure that, that, that we're able to, to, to meet your, your ongoing needs. And there have been a number of borders that have been shut down in emergency from outside the country around the world. And people have called us in a panic and have to find, fill out all the documentation, you know, very important for us all to understand what the expectations are, all the agreement, master service agreement, profiles, what have you, in order to get that in a time frame. So the more time we have to get things ready, ideally, so when it comes time to the actual shipment, communications is, is critical. And, and if I could just uh, uh, just join what John was saying right there, I think uh, it's important to note. It's funny because we all work together uh, very closely. Uh, when we have to pivot, when we have an emergency request come in uh, and looking at the available capacity, it is, it's a conversation between us and our partners. Uh, we wanna make sure that we can accommodate and we do a lot. Sometimes we, we, we have to think outside of the box. Uh, if we have some availability, and it's a matter of recalibrating one of our chambers, validation. We have all the internal resources to expedite the, those types of situations, depending on what, what type of circumstance we're talking about. So I may reach out to Lauren or uh, Mike uh, or George to pull resources together to make sure that we're in compliance and that we're, we're able to accommodate. Great, so, thanks, John. Yeah, I think the point there that, that John, you know, John and I were, were making was time. If we have the time and we can plan, the more time, the better, uh, then we can accommodate. I, uh, I don't know if you saw the other question, John, for you from Praveen. What is the deadline for a same day ship out request using FedEx, who I think is your preferred shipping partner? I don't know if that's along the same lines, but if you could address that maybe. Yeah, so that, that's also a good question. Uh, because th those do happen. Uh, generally, uh, ideally, we'd like to have at least two business days in advance, um, but we recognize that, again, circumstances are extenuating. So uh, we, uh, the order comes in, we, we accommodate it, depending on if we have the resources, the available, and, and a big thing for us, we're a highly regulated uh, company in a highly regulated industry. So we gotta make sure that the documentation is in place and that we have all of our checks uh, and procedures followed. So the the obstacle that a same day shipment presents is just making sure that all of those different uh, elements are are satisfied. Um, but we we've had same day requests come in, and we can accommodate. Um, you know, it, if it's a giant order, we may have to pull some extra resources together. Uh, but we're doing everything that we can to uh, make those uh, make those requests happen. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, Lauren, I don't, there was one question for you. The question is, can you still perform all validation study types and serve all U.S. locations? If not, what locations or study types are on hold? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we uh, can still, we're still serving um, customers across the U.S. Uh, we have four offices as well. So here in Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and California. So just by having the four offices that, that really expands the number of customers that are even simply a day drive away. Uh, so it's not just, just the Massachusetts area that we can service just for a day drive um, for overnight stays. That's, we're really assessing that on a case-to-case -case basis depending on uh, the COVID situation in the area, travel restrictions that those states have put into place. Um, and availability of, of like overnight stays and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, I mean, we can drive. We just had uh, someone who just drove across several states to get back home to us. So we're willing to drive across states as well, uh, even if we cannot fly. If I could add to that, some what happens is there are a lot of companies that are putting essential people only for production. And some of these, the validation projects are, are shifting and drifting, okay? And so what, what I anticipate is some period of time, maybe it's a month, maybe two months, maybe six weeks, somewhere there's a period of time where as things start to shake and open up, the requirement, it's kind of like a tsunami is gonna happen. And, it, and many people are gonna ask for the same thing at the same time. And so 
that's where I anticipate there may be a, a difficulty to fulfill everybody's immediate needs because the lax time that is happening now is pushing off and it's going to occur at, at one big wave. So, um, so if there's a need, it's best to work with us and communicate so we can work things out and figure out what's the best method to be able to either nibble at it a little bit or to get at it with, you know, sooner than later. That's an excellent point. Like uh, a lot of our cost, a lot of our work that was scheduled for March with all of the chaos and stuff in March with everyone um, initially dealing with the situation, a lot of that was pushed off and we're actually encountering those jobs are coming back in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so we're actually hitting our very first wave of that situation. And then I expect within the month, next month or so, we'll see that for all our travel jobs across the country as well that have uh, been put on hold for the time being. Great, thanks, Lauren. Um, I'm just looking at the next question here. It was to bio to, to John Orange again. I'm a CMO and my customer cannot take possession of finished product due to slowdowns on their end. Can Mozzie handle overflow storage and how does that work? Absolutely. And it's funny because we've, we've actually had um, some situations like that happen, um, both, both in that direction and also um, you know, there's been concerns because of the pandemic. Uh, a big concern, I guess, in a lot of areas are, um, you know, th there may be a particular area that they're worried about. Um, you may not be able to um, get shipments out of anymore. So a lot of shipments uh, might have come in that uh, maybe just the um, our partners were concerned with. Um, hey, we might not be able to ship this this material out from, you know, it could be international or somewhere domestic, but you're just worried about borders closing. And uh, we've been able to, to take those in uh, to the point that, that I was making earlier with uh, accommodating those type of overflow requests. It, it, it all depends on resources and chamber, current chamber capacity availability. Um, but again, that's one of the things that time, time is on our side. If we have enough time to prepare for that and to rearrange some things, it may be a matter of moving some material around uh, so that we can Put everything in, in one place. Uh, time, I guess, is our best friend at this point. So, yeah. Great. Thanks, John. I have a yeah, question for Mike Alberti next. Um, the question for calibration is, are there any restrictions in terms of having an on-site <laughs> calibration performed right now? Actually, um, there isn't. Um, we, we have safeguards um, and we, we've done a good job of working with our customers uh, to make sure that we adhere to their requirements for us visiting. Um, so there, there actually is not the only thing. It's more along the lines what Lauren was speaking about. Um, we will take anything outside of a of a car drive into consideration, but um, that would be case by case. But right now, as far as um, our customers are concerned, for in the lab and the field, it's business as usual. Um, we, we have good uh, practices and plans in place to uh, make sure that the customer and our technicians are um, being um, uh, being safe. So. so just to add to that for a moment, Mike, um, the one thing that, I, that should be mentioned is that we will be asking the customers for the processes and procedures that they're employing to uh, minimize the possibility of our employees uh, being exposed um, and assuming that those are appropriate and, and they're in place. Um, and we have PPE available for employees, uh, and they, so we feel that they're, you know, they're not uh, unduly uh, jeopardized. We will uh, be able to support you. It's actually yes. a really good point. And, and if I could, the the, the our, our technicians, our engineers, give the ultimate. They have the ultimate say when they go on a site, whether it's safe or it's not safe. Yep. Great. Um, I have a monitoring question next for George Bureau. Um, the question is, can Mossy monitoring systems be installed by a customer or do you need to have someone sent out to install? Good question. Yeah, that uh, the, the Sense Anywhere system is truly effortless to set up. So if you can unpeel some double-sided tape, you can set up the system. It has a DIY capability. So if, if you know what you're looking for, uh, we can get it coming your way. And it is 
probably you know a five minute setup. It is uh, it requires no infrastructure other than a live Ethernet cord, uh, so you don't have to wait for any IT deadlines or bottlenecks. Uh, the it's a all in one system because it's a it's a cloud system. So as long as you get that receiver uh, talking to the cloud, which is easy peasy, extremely quick, you have a monitoring system. I typically enjoy setting those up in sub two minutes, which is pretty amazing. And that's only afforded to us by the Internet of Things uh, type of software that this provides. Great. Um, Amy, Amy, if I could just catch one more thing with uh, the, the, with John Orange and, and the, the question the customer was asked, the person, the person was requesting and how we can handle things. And uh, one of the things that I find is most recently is um, I'm a bad artist. Just in time, and inventory is evil. If I get that right, okay. What what we've been seeing in the last uh, six weeks, eight weeks, what have you, kind of shifting, is that the the fight, the, the the industry that we're in, the pharmaceutical, biotech, and medical device, you know, inventory is evil. All these things. But what we're finding in some of the some of the webinars, some of the things that we've been hearing for the last so many weeks are that they got caught without the inventory. They got caught without critical components of the chain of things they need. Maybe a glove, you know, in a clean suite. Maybe, you know, maybe gowning stuff in a clean suite. Maybe mops. Whatever it ends up being, they need. So what we've been hearing around is that people are saying, they're mandatory saying have a year, six months, 18 months. That's, we hear that. Worth of critical supplies to keep their operations running and going, which means this is going to build up. So, so we we have space for for people that need that, but that's something that you know it's hard because the CMOs that are, are planning on doing this, they have to ramp up too. Great, thanks, John. Um, I think I'm going to do one last question, and this is for for Gary Best. Um, the question is, I need to rent a validator for an upcoming chamber mapping. Do you have sufficient inventory in stock? How long are wait times right now? Uh, yes, we do have inventory in stock. Um, the Massey business model is quality first, customer service right there with it. And uh, we would like to have the chance to give you a quote at least a week ahead of time. But we do have inventory. We can make arrangements to get you what you need, where you need it, when you need it. Uh, that's our business. So give me a call or send me an email at gary.best at massey.com and we'll get your quote. Great, thanks Gary. Um, I, think, um, I think that's all the questions we have and we're out of time. So thank you all for coming. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to us and get a little more information on what we're doing in the middle of COVID-19. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to go to our website or, or email us, give us a call. Um, we're always happy to answer questions you may have. And um, if you are here at the webinar, you will be receiving a, a recording of this as well to your email, the email you used to sign up. So you'll have that to look back at. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, we'll see you around. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right.